Next up is Sami Abassad. I have worked with him almost my entire 10-year tenure in the markets. Uh, so we came to T3 together. We had worked seven years together before that. So of anyone, I have the closest relationship, uh, not only on a personal level, but a professional level with Sammy. He taught me a lot of what I now know about trading, um, what brought me to be a counselor, especially the psychological part of trading. He's one of the most kindest people, but stone cold as far as his trading psychology. So I think that's something that people ask about the most. I can read charts, but how do I control my mentality? And that's something that, that he has perfected over the years. So not to, you know, make embarrassed there, but I really look up to him a lot. Uh, he teaches several courses that we have. Um, we have five different home studies. He does both a swing trading, two to five day swing trading service that we offer, plus a day trading service that we offer. So please, I'd like to give my welcome to my dear friend, Sammy Abbasad. Thank you, thank you. Well, thanks, Amber, for that warm welcome. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm almost blushing here. Uh, but everything she said is true. We, we have, we've uh, been working to get together for 10 years. Uh, as uh, some of you know, I started out uh, at Pristine, and, um, and then Pristine and T3 merged, and that's how I ended up here. Uh, let's see if the slight clicker works. A couple of nice disclaimers for you to look at. And then, um, as for my intro, I just want to say how I got into the stock market, because I used to be a CPA. And I did the continuing education for like eight years, and I, I decided I'm not doing that anymore. So I gave up my license. But uh, I saved up $20,000 while I was still going to college, um, and didn't know what to do with it. I read about Warren Buffett and uh, read that the second, uh, second richest man in the world made all of his money from trading, from investing. So I, so I was fascinated. And then I read about a 21-year-old kid from New York who made a million dollars the year before. And I thought, if he can do it, I'm going to blow him out of the water. That's how competitive I was. Uh, not arrogant, but just real competitive. So I opened an account with $16,000 with Ameritrade, and in, 10, in six months, I made $10,000, which was nice, but I didn't think much of it. Six months later, it was 50000 So I was fascinated. Obviously, we're not talking big money here, but I was fascinated how I could just, from 16 to, to 50 in, in any year. And my PhD brother, who was struggling to make ends meet, uh, was just as fascinated with the results as I was and said, if you can make that kind of mon money by buying and holding, imagine what you could do by uh, playing these active stocks. He was referring to the, to the list of stocks on the most highest gainers, highest losers. So that's when I got into day trading and uh, found out. And then in a short few months, I lost everything and, uh, and 15, that I made and $15,000 more. And that's kind of when I realized, okay, I don't really know as much as I thought I did and started to look for professional trading education. Before I found Pristine, I, uh, I, I came across a website, most of you probably know, Zax.com, which, which is similar to Yahoo Finance. And I uh, participated in a trading challenge. The winner of that challenge uh, got $100,000 at the end of the year. I did rather poorly. But uh, I, I, did, I achieved something that, that was better than winning the challenge, which is I met the, the one that won it. Uh, he, he turned $100,000 into $2 million, uh, within a year. The way I got to know him was he, his, he wrote up a blog post about his dad passing away. So I just sent him a message. I didn't expect a reply, a heartfelt message. Uh, sending him my condolences, and then we got to chat, and then he told me that he had been a, 15, he had been a professional trader, trader for 15 years, learned it all from a small company called Pristine. And he said, you got to check him out. So I did, and then the rest is history. 
I basically signed up for all their classes. And then I became, you know, I, I became kind of well known in the room as a member of the room and then was asked to become a, a teacher. I thought, a teacher, I want to be a trader. But teaching is a calling for me. I, I love to teach. So I thought, I'll give it a try. I just, you know, just do it for six months or something like this. I was doing a remodel also at my house. So I thought, I'll just do it while I'm busy with the remodel for six months. And then I, uh, and then I uh, ended up uh, basically becoming uh, a full-time uh, educator and trader. So that's my story. When T3 and uh, Pristine merged, I was named Director of Education. And, uh, and now on to the slide presentation. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about several strategies that I do. I, throughout the course of my trading career, I realized that um, not everything works as well under every market condition or environment. There are things better suited for a specific type of market environment. And I always learned that the hard way. I always learned that as I, you know, as I was trading, I realized oh, this is not working. This is working. And so I've accumulated a number of strategies over the years that I now deploy based on the market condition. But it's all based on common sense. If I tell you, if, I'm, if, if, I, if you hear me say something that doesn't make sense to you, it means I'm, not, I'm either not explaining it correctly, you're not understanding me, or there's a break in communication. Everything that I say should make sense. If it doesn't make sense, that's when you, your suspicion alarm should go off, okay? And that applies to everyone, not just me. Somebody comes up here and tries to teach you something that doesn't make sense, you know, that's when you, you should ask, right? Because there's probably a reason. Okay, so how I got started in trading, I already talked about what is swing trading, rules, difficulties, advantages, the only movement possible, how trends are created, and how to trade earnings. Okay, so we talked about how I started trading already. I will skip through that. And then, like I said, I told you the whole story, right? And then, um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about first swing trading. And um, it's uh, day trading is for income pr production, to just make income, in income generation. It's very active, obviously. Swing trading is my wealth building tool. I use it to... Um, the thing about swing trading that is great is institutional money can't get in and out of the market in a day or two. I mean, they're trading millions upon millions of shares. Um, and then at the same time, they, they're not day traders either, so they like to hold for a long time. Day traders, on the other hand, are, they have to get out by the end of the day. So that leaves you with an, a very overlooked niche, one that is too large for day traders, and too short for institutional investors. Anytime you have a, a, a window like this that's not being completely taken advantage of, you have an opportunity. Does that make sense? So that's what, that's what I like about swing trading. Positions are held one to 10 days. The daily time frame is used for finding patterns. So I, I, the daily time frame is the most important for swing trading. The hourly is where I want to see my entry shaping up. What kind of an entry I'm talking about? Am I talking about? I'm talking about either a base breakout or a pullback to the trend, to the trend line, you can say. Either a base breakout or a pullback. If you think about it, prices can only correct in one of two ways. They can correct, stocks can correct through time by going sideways or through price by pulling back. Can you think of anything else? That, not really. Either through time or through price. That's how stocks correct. So breakouts or pullbacks, that's it. Everything else is a variation. Everything else is a variation. Um, now, why you should care about uh, sw swing trading. Did you know that the market 100%, in fact, 105% of all the gains the market makes over the years are made up in the overnight gap? 100%. Meaning, if you were to buy at the end of the day, every single day, and sell at the end of the, at the open the next morning, you'll make as much as the, the SPY has made over the years, and more by 5%. The problem is, 
that doesn't account for uh, transaction costs, which if you're buying every single day and selling every single morning over many, many years, will you know you, you won't even break even. So that's the problem. But otherwise, 100% of market gains happen overnight. Uh, during trend, trending markets, swing trading is the easiest style because you just follow the market. And basically, you let the market do the work for you. It's gapping up. It goes in your favor. The market crashed recently. If you're in the strategic swing trader program, which I run, I mean, it's been phenomenal because you just all you do is just you short anything that goes with the market, and then bam. Now I don't just short. I, I have to find the right stocks. So what did I do? For example, I did Square SQ. Where did I cover it? At 66.80, and that's where I flipped it also. So I'm I'm long 300 shares. But that's, so I, I, love, I love swing trading because it goes with the market. You let the market do the work for you. That's, that's what I love about it. Day trading, you have to do all the work yourself. Um, news announcements work in your favor most of the time if you're trading along the line of least resistance. Uh, there's a passage in Jesse Livermore's book where he talks about how the chart will tell you what the news is, is going to be, whether it's positive or negative for the stock. You don't even need to commit a felony by trying to, to, figure, to get inside information. The chart will already tell you what's going on. I also just recently recorded a video about Starbucks. And what it is is I, I just got in the stock because it, it felt there's something going on special about it. The market was down. Starbucks was up that day. No news on Starbucks. And then... Literally, one minute after we got in it, one minute, it exploded. Like, what's going on? Bill Ackman revealed that he, he has a 900 million stake in Starbucks. So I didn't trade based on inside information. Obviously, the people that were in it already knew something was going on. I didn't, but the chart already told me that. So I don't, I don't even need to read the news or know what's going on, because you'll see it in the tape. You'll see it uh, based on what the institutional traders are doing. You'll see it. And you can just, if you read price action objectively, you can just take advantage of it. So news announcements work in your favor most of the time. There's a, there's a large universe. There is 20,000 stocks out there. Most of them are not playable. But on a day-to-day -day basis, there's at least 2,000 stocks that are playable if you're holding overnight. If you're day trading them, maybe there's just about 1,000 that are liquid enough to day trade, not even 1,500. But, but for swing trading, you don't need the huge liquidity because you're just you're buying and you're holding overnight. You're not in and out, in and out, scalping. So you, you don't need liquid, that much uh, volume or liquidity. So there's a large universe to select from. And then obviously, there's multiple strategies, which I'm going to show you. Um, sometimes less is more. Um, some of the unique advantages to swing trading is that I only need to spend about one to two hours a day to select the plays that I want to do. I don't need to sit with the market for six and a half hours like I do in day trading. I'm not saying day trading, there's anything wrong with day trading. I love day trading. I'm a day trader too. But that's one advantage that I have in swing trading over day trading is I don't have to spend as much time. Um, less stress. At the end of the day, uh, during dynamic market, move, dark market environments, I mean, I may have not gotten off my seat. I'm, I actually have a sit-stand desk, so I'm constantly up and down. But uh, I may have stayed stationary the whole day, and I'm exhausted at the end of the day in day trading because it's stressful. Things are moving, and you're reacting in, you know, on the spot. In swing trading, a lot less stressful. You, know, you just buy, and you let the market do the work for you. Uh, and then w during the day, if you're day trading, you lose your objectivity because things you're, you're seeing your PNL live move up and down, fluctuate. In swing trading, most of it is happening in the overnight gap, up or down, against you or for you. But that's most so you have more objectivity in swing trading. Tips for success: uh, most important thing I think would be to know what the market trend is, but it's not everything. Um, you, you want to focus on high quality setups because, uh, because you're taking overnight risk. So you don't want to take anything that's questionable 
and end up with a large gap down against you. Does that make sense? You want to focus on high quality only. Your, your stock must be secure. Sometimes I find really tight stops, but I know that if, if, there's, if, if we get any news overnight, the stock is just going to blow right through my stock. So I have to select what I consider secure stops. Very, very solid support levels that should not break unless there's like catastrophic news. So that's, that's important in swing trading. Also, multiple time frames should be in alignment. And what I'm talking about here is the daily, the hourly, and the weekly must be in alignment. They all should be saying up or down. They all should be saying up or down. Share sizing must in, uh, consider the, the volatility of the stock that you're trading. Uh, you might uh, find a really tight stop on Tesla or Telray or whatever. But these stocks move so much, so you want to make sure your share sizing is also appropriate. Um, must ensure company has no pending news unless that's what you're actually playing, unless you're playing the earnings strategy. So before, I, before the end of the day, I check the symbols to make sure they don't have a news announcement that, uh, that's already scheduled because you don't want to jump in front unless, again, you're, you, you know they're reporting earnings and you're playing the earnings strategy. I also like to play small stocks. Uh, they're, they're called penny stocks, but they're not really necessarily penny stock. Could be a 4 or $5 stock because they move so much. It's much easier for a $3 stock to go to $6 than for a $300 stock to go to $600. It just, it just is. So I get large, huge moves in my favor when it's a small cap stock. Uh, but the, the thing is, so you don't get caught, they have to be high volume. If they're low volume, you can get caught easily and you can't even get out of it. So consider low dollar stocks, but make sure they're high volume, okay? This is probably the most important thing you can, uh, you can learn today, right now, from me. Um, that, and, and the thing that I'm going to say here is the, every life cycle, every life form, like our life form, it, it has a beginning, you know, a baby, infant, toddler, teenager, whatever, adult, old man, and then you die. Every life has a, a beginning and an end. So it is for stocks. Some don't necessarily go all the way down and die, but they go in stages and cycles, up and down. And it can keep going up, 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 but it, it doesn't go in a straight line, never. It goes in a cycle, always. So can we, can we learn the cycle? Are there different characteristics to, and stages to the cycle? Yes, there are. Uh, so that's, that's the most important thing that you can learn. And you'll see why in a minute. So the entire life of a stock and or the market is comprised of a cycle repeated time and time again. This cycle forms the basis for one's ability to predict future price movements. This cycle referred to as the atom helps the trader know the current status of the stock as well as what's likely to occur next. The key to trading successfully is knowing where you are in the cycle. The key to trading successfully is knowing where you are in the cycle. Don't ever forget that. This cycle is comprised of, of four distinct stages, which in turn are ruled by four distinct emotions. Uh, this is the cycle on the right, but we're, we'll go over it in, in detail in a minute. All the trader needs to do is learn how to handle himself in, the, in each of the four stages. The trader who knows how to handle himself in, four, in all four stages knows about 85% um, of the market activity. The trader trades with the flow of the stage about 90% of the time, and using the appropriate trading tools and tactics, you can go against the stage uh, about roughly about 10% of the time. This is when you go against, when, when stocks go climactic and you go against them, okay? Which is something that I like to do. This is the cycle on a monthly chart. Now, you might think I actually worked really hard to find the stock that shows you this cycle, or this cycle, or that cycle. Not at all. I invite you to look up any stock you want, and just look at it on the monthly chart, because it, it's easier to see the entire cycle, where you have a, 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 a stage one that is, that is characterized by uh, dormancy. Nobody's interested in the stock. Why aren't they interested? Because stage one always comes after stage four, which is the downtrend, where everybody gets hurt. So you have stage one, and then the stock starts to, it starts to get some news, 
people start to get interested in it, and it breaks out. And then once it's up, it, that's, that is known as stage two, and it's dominated by greed. You, you start hearing about the stock every day in the news, and then people want to make money, so they start chasing it, chasing it. And that's why we say the greater fool theory rules. Because one fool, even if they're buying it late, still makes money selling to another fool because it keeps going up. Until, of course, you get stage three, which is the top. And then this is what's happening with the market right now. And then you get the stage four collapse. The we are currently in a stage three uh, top. But sometimes stage three looks like it's the top. We get three months down like, like so. And then, and then the stock goes back up and then either fails to make a new high and rolls over or continues higher. So you always have to be objective and constantly be evaluating. Do, you know, are we in a stage three? Are we in a stage four? So you're, you're constantly trying to be objective. You can't ever get comfortable in trading. Whatever, whatever feels comfortable is not, it doesn't work in trading. Just remember that because if it's, if it's comfortable and easy, everybody would be doing it. So trading is very counterintuitive. If it feels comfortable, oh, be careful. You're, you're setting yourself up for fa failure. So that's kind of the fourth, the fourth stage cycle. Again, stage one is always followed by stage two. Stage two is always followed by stage three. And stage three is always followed by stage four. And then the cycle repeats. Oh, the cycle repeats. Now, let me show you this. Again, as I said, sometimes it is still a cycle, but it's an uptrending cycle. It goes up and up and up. This is like the market or, the, or Apple or Microsoft or Walmart. One of these days, some of these companies might not be around, but that's currently how they're, you know, how they're moving. Uh, now, based on the cycle, based on what we just discussed, in your opinion, what areas on this cycle likely, most likely, provide the best opportunities with the highest reward to risk? What areas on the chart most likely provide the highest reward to risk? I'll tell you. I have a laser pointer. I told Amber, if anybody asks me a tough question, I got a laser pointer. So take a look. This is when the stock, this is where the stock explodes, right? Higher. And this is where the stock ex breaks down and then drops. So, so those are right here and right there at the top are the most, the most lucrative areas to get in, okay? But, but there's one, one little issue, is that's when volatility is the highest. When the market is moving so much, uh, you know, you, you freeze. You say, oh, well, let me wait and see what uh, is going on. And then like SQ square, it dropped from 100 bucks, 100 something to 60 in a matter of five days. Okay, it's gone. So you were thinking, okay, well, there's the volatility here. Let me see what's going on. And it's already down here. It's gone. So, so uh, reward is always proportional to risk. So when it's most rewarding is when the volatility is highest. So you want to be always one step ahead of the market. You, you, want, you always want to be thinking, what is about to happen? You don't want to be thinking, analyzing what has already happened. Any fool can do that. You want to be thinking about what's about to happen, always. So you want to be proactive, not reactive. Does that make sense? Now, the, up here at the end of stage two, we don't always go sideways. We sometimes just get a, a sharp top and then we drop. That's when transition B, this is called transition B, becomes important rather than transition C. So it just depends on how the stock sets up. Okay, so there's... This is called transition A. Let me show you. Oops. I went back. So this is transition A. This is transition B. This is transition C. And that's transition D. Those are typically the most lucrative areas to get in on the stock. Now, you can't always catch it at the bottom or at the top. Can you also play this nice big uptrend? Absolutely. Can you play this nice big downtrend? Absolutely. Can you play the stock while it's basing? Yes, but it's hard. Because it's hard, I don't even do it. We teach you how to do it. I don't even do it. Because why bother if it's, if it's a difficult, narrow range area? Why bother? 
I want to focus on when the stock is moving a lot or right when it's about to top out and break down. That's where I want to get in, into the stock. So again, going over this picture took me about 10 minutes, but grasping it might take you 10 years, 10 months, 10 days, 10 minutes. It all depends on how ready you are. I know, I know some of you might be thinking, what are you talking about? 10 months, 10 years. I understood everything you said. I know that. But trust me when I say it, sometimes it takes a long, long time before you, I don't even know if this is a, re a real word or not, grok. Grok something. You know it on every level. It's like if I, if I were to describe to you what an orange tastes like, I can tell you oh, it's, it's a little sweet and it's like a melon, but it's also a little sour like a, uh, a little sweet like a melon, but sour like a lemon. But once you bite into it, it's a completely different thing. Completely different thing. So this is, so this is, this takes a while to really truly grok, to get it on every level. Once you do, your trading will never be the same, guaranteed. So I'm gonna teach you the different transitions, because those are, so transition A, B, C, and D. You're not gonna learn everything here. I'm just giving you an introduction. If, you, if this is something that's interesting to you, then you can dig deeper. I'm not, pretend, not standing up here pretending like you're gonna get it and tomorrow you're gonna open an account and then bam, you're gonna be successful. But see if it makes sense. And if it does, follow it all the way to the end. Just follow it, okay? You wanna get rich quick stock trading scheme? Well then look elsewhere. Want unsexy but proven tips from a professional trader? Well then I'm your guy. I'm sharing these trading methods for free in my ebook, Unsexy Trend Analysis Secrets that generate beautiful profits. This book is focused entirely on the same trading strategies that I use and refine every single trading day. Now, I'm not promising that these methods will make you an overnight millionaire, of course, but they are the foundational skills behind my many years of success and have benefited the countless students that I've shared them with. I can't wait to share my methods with you and I know I will be hearing from you soon. Hit that link now.